Welcome to another episode of Game Boy Roulette, where we take a look at randomly chosen games from the Game Boy Library. Dr. Franken 2. Insert electric boogaloo joke here. Am I the only one who thinks it's kind of weird that we have any video games at all based on Frankenstein? The original 1818 novel was a meditation on life and science and grief and loss, told through a groundbreaking science fiction lens, but hardly the kind of source material that you could get a game out of. And the 1931 film, the one that created the iconic look that Frankenstein's monster is known for, wasn't that much more action-packed, apart from a few peasants chases. And while there haven't been that many Frankenstein games, I'm still confused as to how there are any at all. And I guess that's kinda par for gaming, though. They've never shied away from turning literally anything into a game. And Frankenstein is well known, so I guess it's not surprising. Dr. Franken 1, released for the Game Boy and Super Nintendo, takes a total right turn with the story into absurdity. It features Frankie, who is A Frankenstein's monster but not the main one, collecting the body parts of his girlfriend, which frankly raises all sorts of ethical questions. Dr. Franken 2, released in 1993 in Europe and 1997 in North America, is another side-scrolling platformer, with the plot being that Frankie has to pay his bills? Okay, I guess if you're trying to turn Frankenstein's monster into a mascot platformer, might as well go fully comedic, but this is still a lot to deal with. Combined with the fact that this character disappeared after this, and the developer, Motive Time, didn't make anything memorable, I don't really have high hopes. And if this all wasn't weird enough, the box art gets even weirder. I was unaware Frankenstein's monster had a magic carpet, or an army of seagulls, or visited Egypt. Okay, what the hell is this game? This one is gonna be weird. It's alive, it's Dr. Franken 2. Dr. Franken 2, an elite release. It's elite. It's, it's elite. Oh, it's one of those games with really, really quiet music. Dr. Franken 2. Hey, come back here, title screen. Demo time! What the hell? Oh, God. What is happening? It's like a super cut. No, I want to actually play the game. Let's do this. Entering the Chateau. Three francs. Oh, this game is moving way too fast for me. Locked. Okay. I'm sorry, is Jason Voorhees trying to break in? Oh, wait, is that Mike Myers? It's someone! Uh, okay, I'll leave. What? There was a hand over there. How much health do I have left? Oh. Oxygen? Transporter? This is... What? Leave, okay. Oh, this is so weird. Are those bongos? Is it like a Metroidvania? Question mark? Okay, it's very hard to tell what is and isn't in the background. Okay, let's take a minute to figure out what the hell's going on. The jumping controls are very awkward. Okay, that's invincibility. You hit B to shoot your Frankie shot. This room is full of things. So what's the point of this game? I guess we have to find a way to pay the tax man. What's locked? The tree? <laughs> this game is doing a terrible job explaining what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. I mean, I've played worse controlling games, but it still doesn't make this game very easy to control. It has a lot of awkwardness. Okay, they're going for a Metroidvania-like big maze level. The problem is everything kind of looks... <laughs> Who's that? Is that Van Gogh? Everything looks the same. I do appreciate that they have the little, uh, text at the bottom telling you where you are, because otherwise I'd be totally lost. I mean, I am totally lost, but still, what are you? Okay, so there are ways to keep track of everything, but it's still very needlessly confusing. Hang on. Whenever I get this confused by a game, I do want to check a guide, so let's see if we can find anything interesting. Oh god, look at these instructions. It's like an adventure game. There's so much you have to do. That said, I am starting to pick up on some of the intricacies, quote unquote, of the gameplay. Oh. See? Okay, I actually just found something that can probably have a use somewhere. Now, will I find what to do with it? No. But I feel like I have to shift my thinking on this game. It's not a platformer. It's an adventure game that features platforming. That's a big, big difference. Oh. Skeleton. Dead. 
Oh, it go go to hell, game! It respawns you in the thing. I I'm not hating it, but it's becoming very clear to me that I would need a lot of practice to figure out what I'm doing. This is not really a game you can get a handle on in 10 minutes. What it is is a very... Oh, God. Eyeball. Let me finish my sentence game, please. It's an in-depth game. The controls are definitely wonky. The graphics are actually not bad. I mean, look at this. This is actually a pretty nice background now that I look at it. And there is a lot of content. There's eight different worlds, and each one has its own map. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can end up doing. But it's just, it's taking me time to get a handle on it. Wasn't I just here? It's also, it is difficult to tell where anything is, and what is and isn't an exit. You, you do have to treat it like an adventure game. But that being said, I mean, I've been running around for quite some time, and I'm totally lost. I'm back here again? Here. Can I pay you in matches? This is the kind of game that you'd kind of have to come back to over and over and over again to figure out, well, to get a handle on everything. I could see myself, like, making my own map. Because the in-game one doesn't seem that useful. Also, I haven't really talked about it, but I, I dig the music. You know, I'm already, like, mapping stuff in this game out in my head, and that's a good sign. I have no misgivings that I'm going to get anywhere in this game through this playthrough. This is a game that I think kind of takes a lot of investment. And if you play it and the awkwardness is too much for you, I completely understand throwing it out and never speaking of it again. But I actually think there's something here. I think there's definitely the idea here. Now, does that necessarily make it a good game? Eh, I don't know. I'd say probably not. It's very, very flawed. I'm doing a lot of thinking about it, and I could absolutely see, as a kid, getting into this one. It's fine, but flawed. Much like Frankenstein's monster itself. Uh, actually, come to think of it, I don't think fine is the way to describe that. My feelings on this game are, uh, let's go with complex. I went into Dr. Franken 2 expecting a standard platformer, but instead I got a hybrid of side-scroller and adventure game, one that had a lot of very bad design choices that threatened to completely ruin the experience. The level was very maze-like and confusing to navigate, the jumping was incredibly stiff, a lot of the enemies were really hard to avoid, and when you respawned it put you right back where you died. The graphics, while nice, didn't do nearly enough to distinguish the levels either, making it all the more of a headache to know where to go next. It was just a weird, awkward mashup of two genres that had a laundry list of flaws. And yet, somehow, I want to keep playing it. For all its problems, clearly there's something about this game that's working, because I feel the urge to jump back in and figure things out. Maybe it was the feeling of having a dumbed-down adventure game on the Game Boy. Maybe it was the good graphics and sound. Maybe it was feeling like I was starting to make progress by the end of my play session. But the game just had this odd magnetic grab that really resonated with me. You know how every once in a while you find a game that has more issues than Nintendo Power, and yet you can't help but enjoy it? I think that might be this game for me. I'm genuinely tempted to go back and play more, make my own map, see if I can make some real headway into completing it. Is Dr. Franken 2 a good game? I don't think so. But there's enough of a spark here where I think I still recommend checking it out. I won't blame you if you try it out and hate it, but as for me, I'm ready to jump back in for more. Specifically, I want to see stuff like the Magic Carpet and Egypt. God, what a bizarre cover, huh? And that's all for another episode of Game Boy Roulette. Make sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe to follow the series as we continue to dig through the Game Boy Vault. I'm Brian J, and I'll see you next time.